Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. It is just under two minutes until this fantastic live stream is gonna be in your eyes and in your ears. And I promise you, because all the content we do is really good, that it is going to be absolutely worth the wait. We are just now checking our microphone levels, making sure the internet's okay and it's not gonna go kaboom on us at any point. We've got the new compressors for the audio, so we're not spiking and not hurting your ears. In the meantime, you can, of course, check out this incredible piece of Red Men TV merch that we designed. Um, I think you'll agree, it's absolutely brilliant. Obviously, I recorded this ages ago, so it could be literally anything, but I'm sure it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and of course, don't forget as well, we've got our own streaming platform, that is Red Men Plus. Red Men Plus is the home of Red Men TV and has absolutely everything we do there from in-depth documentary series to more relaxed podcast stuff like we do on the main channel uh, on YouTube. So yeah, it's not going to be long now. It's around about 50 seconds. At this point, uh, peek behind the curtain. What is normally happening um, is we're all panicking. I normally need a piss, to be quite honest with you at this point, and then have to run off. Uh, and, and Tom's normally sat in the room going, what's he doing? I've got no idea. Where's he gone? And it's always for a wee, because I've got a really small bladder and I can only last about 40 minutes normally, which is hell when you go and watch a Liverpool game because they're 45 minutes off, especially when you have a pint. But it is what it is, and we live where we live, and we've got to deal with what we've got to deal with. And I promise you that this content is coming up in less than 11 seconds time. And yeah, it's nine, it's eight, it's seven, it's six, it's five, it's four, it's three, it's two, it's one, it's your content! Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is seven o'clock, it is Thursday, it is Thursday night. Pint with me, Paul Machen, and I've got four wonderful humans joining me in the studio to talk about Liverpool's win over Fulham, have a big old chat potentially about Darwin Nunes. We're going to be ranking Liverpool's greatest ever last minute winners in the Premier League era and then we're going to be looking ahead to Brentford as well. It's a jam-packed show with the aforementioned wonderful people. If you want to interact with us during this show, you've got guests, questions uh, or anything you want to muse or remark upon, then do use the live show chat here on YouTube and then if they're good, I might read them. It's as simple as that. Um, before we dive into that, though, let's look back first on the week in Liverpool. And we start with sad and sombre news uh, at the passing of the lesser spotted Blue Nose Pigeon. It was last seen shuffling its weird neck and making a peculiar shushing sound in front of the Anfield Road end at the weekend. Um, the last confirmed sighting of it was it trying to keep its head from falling off its shoulders in the wake of Diogo Jota's late last gasp winner to make it 4-3 to Liverpool. Reports that Diogo Jota could be facing action on behalf of the RSPCA for animal cruelty remain unconfirmed as of yet. Jürgen Klopp faces punishment from the FA after coming to loggerheads once again um, with an official. Um, also preceding that, um, Jürgen Klopp decided that the best way to show unity with his squad that's currently in the form in terms of flux and rebirth, best way to show unity with them um, and all the trials and tribulations they've gone through this season so far was to get a hamstring injury. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really, really puts them on a level peg into all these guys. Like, guys, I know what you're going through. I'm injured too. Isn't it great? Let's all let's all fight through regardless. Uh, but no, he, he came head to head once again in a football match with a man who perfectly embodies a Venn diagram. Perfect centre of a Venn diagram that has bald people and shit referees. Um, right in the middle there, Paul Tierney. Yeah, what a bell. Um, more on that as and when it breaks in the coming days, I'm certain. 
I'm certain he's going nowhere because he just loves to make us all miserable. Um, some transfer news, um, or rather the news that a, a stalwart of the Liverpool side may well be making his final appearances for the Reds in the last couple of days. James Milner will leave on a free transfer and it looks as though he will join Brighton and Hove Albion at the end of the season. Um, here, living by the sea is good for old joints. Sounds like a pretty solid move to me. In other midfield news, Thiago Alcantara has been ruled out for the rest of the season with an injury. Shock. Um, okay, moving on from that, Liverpool took their unbeaten run in the league to seven games. Yes, we haven't lost in the league in seven games. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Yeah, it's true. Um, Mo Salah, uh, who's new tactic when he takes penalties is just to kick them really hard past the goalkeeper solid tactic uh, has now bagged four from the penalty spot this season taking his total goal contributions for the campaign up to 40 yes 40 not bad for a fella who's supposedly having a poor season a eh? um for a little bit of context Player of the season elect nominee, certainly, um, from the Gunners contingent, Bukayo Saka, uh, has 15 less than that. Just saying. Apropos of nothing, just thought I'd throw that out there. Saka, much worse season, even though he's playing brilliantly than Mohamed Salah. There's levels to this stuff, isn't there? Right, that is <laughs> Weekend Liverpool. Plenty more to come, I'm sure, in the coming days, which we will cover on the show. Um, right, sound. it is time for me to introduce the people who will be partnering with me on our lovely chat this evening. Uh, first and foremost, let me welcome Mr. Steve Hall! <laughs> Simmer down, live studio audience. Yeah, the uh, the the, the stop short of chucking the knickers at you, but um, yes, I'm glad. I'm glad. I've seen the status from them. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Guys, don't listen. Don't listen to the fellas. Yeah, it's a bad day. Um, you okay? I'm great, mate. How are you? Yeah, you spent the day driving through traffic. Yeah, can, yeah. Liverpool seems to be very good luck today, but so we're all good. We're Your all vision. good. Hey. Yeah, get in. Yeah, it's crazy. But you know what? I'm great. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm gonna. I need to. I need to find myself a bevy at some point. I'm Empty glass. Yeah. What do you want? Go on. I'll box it off. Um. One of the green cans there, please, my friend. Right, whilst he's doing that, let me introduce the man who will be sat alongside them. It is, of course, the wonderful, the legendary, Mr. Chris Pajak. <laughs> Chris Pajak! <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, Chris. How are we? You all right? Yeah, good. Find that anything interesting? Not today, no. Not today. Oh, right. I'll tell you in a few days. Okay. So, brilliant. Well, on that on that non bombshell, um, let's bring in our next guest. Uh, it is we've actually got a, a, a genuine member of Parliament coming in the studio, which is uh, which is wild because what the wildest thing is actually a normal human being who's dead sound. Um, <laughs> it is uh, Mr. Ian Bird. The sound of um, the Labour Party cheering you on there, mate. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, Ian, welcome to the show. No, absolutely delighted to be here. Just stepping away from all the madness of local elections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just having a uh, time out and talk about my great love football. Excellent. We can do. We can certainly facilitate that. Um, let's get our final guest in. Then um, should, should we, we sure ring walk? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Should we call him like the, the the is he the face or the voice of 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 like punching punching and kicking people in the UK? It's probably not what he goes by. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, I'm not sure it's what he'd call himself. <laughs> it's the face <laughs> of punching and kicking <laughs> people in the UK. <laughs> it is Mr. Nick Pease. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> 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 excellent, excellent, brilliant. Um, Nick, welcome. Thank you, much yeah. appreciated. Yeah. Again, taking a break from talking about people punching and kicking. And... Yeah, it's nice. Obviously, I spent uh, the early part of my career at the Echo, where I covered a lot of football as well as uh, as well as fight sport. But uh, you know, felt a little bit disillusioned with football. But now, 
I'm a fan again on the cop with the lads. I, yeah. uh, I love it again. What a season to come back to. God, if you can come back in, in a season like this. <laughs> Thankfully, it's been a few years now. <laughs> last season. I was thinking of last season. Yeah, 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 this yeah. season, I just consider this season a hangover. That's how I'm putting it down to. Yeah, yeah to absolutely. Um, right, cool. Let's crack into it. Let's talk about the Reds then. Uh, Steve Hall, Liverpool 1, Fulham 0. Absolutely. And after all the drama, excitement, blood pumping action of Liverpool Tottenham, uh, came Liverpool one Fulham nil, uh, which was a game of football. It was certainly ninety minutes that happened. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't thrilling, was it? It was a uh, just tough watch. I don't know. I, I, I'm starting to think like the, the the season is catching up with these lads a little bit, not just like in terms of all the games, but the 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 midweek and you know midweek uh, weekend midweek weekend where it's been it's been relentless and you know. If you if you're coming back constantly for you know going down against West Ham and then that mad game against Nottingham Forest and then that mad game against Tottenham, it probably is gonna take a little bit out of you in the legs and if it did feel a little bit like that for Liverpool. So fair play to them for just about just about getting it the job done. But I mean, yeah, it was it, it was hardly scintillating stuff, was it? Sorry, my my spilled beer is inching <laughs> ever closer to you, ever gosh. closer to my crotch. Yeah, um, we'll sort that in a second. Amber, get us a towel. Um, Chris, yes, you watched it from the, the studio. Um, I, know, I enjoyed myself. You had a great all time chatting I, shit with Adam. I know it's brilliant because we just switched off to the game really and just had a chat and a laugh and stuff like that. And everyone I've spoken to went to the game was just like in such a bad mood, like oh god, it was so boring. Was falling asleep on the cop and all that type of stuff. <laughs> Thank you. And I was just like, you know what? We had a great night. We chat yeah. footy with your mate. We chatting shit. All that type of stuff. We had loads of people watching. Um, I think we had about 6,000 plus people watching for the most part of the show and stuff like that. So it was a wicked night. Better for them than watching the freaking game. Yeah. I, just watch I, I, yeah. think, I think that's the case, to be honest <laughs> with you. But no, like three points is three points at the end of the day. This Liverpool team six weeks ago wouldn't have got three points in that game. Yeah. So I at think, least there's something there. Yeah, I think that's the point, isn't it, Ian? Is that it's, I described it last night as it's just form. This yeah. is what form looks like. You win games in all different, you know, shapes, forms, and sizes. If we were doing four, three last-minute winners every week, then you're not, you're kind of on a hand to nothing. Yeah. There's no way to live, unfortunately. No, no, absolutely. I think uh, it was a boring game, but we haven't had many boring games really, have we? And I think, uh, yeah, for me, it was some players kept the form. Uh, I think you know it's been really good seeing the development. Before we talk about the development of Jones. Uh, so for me, it was a win after the madness of the weekend. Keeps the pressure on. Uh, hopefully, someone will slip up. Can't see it. But the Europa League as well. Obviously, being in Dublin next year has got to be an attraction as well. So uh, for me, a win's a win. Uh, let's get the three points under our belt and, and crack on. We've got some big games. It's going to be the greatest movement of human people <laughs> Honestly, yeah. between Liverpool and Dublin for hundreds of years. Isn't it? Like, Honestly, <laughs> gonna be, there's going to be more people there for that if we get there than was at the parade in Liverpool. Yeah. 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 Like, it's going to be mental if we get into that final. There's a million people lying the streets of Dublin just to watch just outside the ground. Outside the somewhere. Aviva. Honestly, yeah. I said Down that. the canal outside the Aviva. It's going to be unbelievable. The big lads and girls on Lilo's just like floating past the Isle of Man. <laughs> just like, honestly, it's going to be every which way possible to get over to Ireland. It's going to be absolutely crap. Pretty Patel trying to stop small boats. So they're, 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 they're like, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting shot down on the way, uh, getting rescued by the lifeboats again. Yeah, yeah it was, um, yeah, I think, I think where we're at though, because I agree, it was a bit like, oh, fine. I think Liverpool could do with some encouragement now. They've done the work, they've turned the form around. It looks like they know what to do. And again, they're all pulling in the right direction. Yes, there's work to be done, of course, but I think they could use a crumb of something. Because I think you know, going for Europa League, I think it's fine. I think we can all agree we will make it of the Europa League what it'll be yeah, if, yeah. if they're in there. But if if top four is going to happen, they could really do with just that glimmer of hope. Now you know what I mean. I think United are playing Brighton, Brighton tonight. tonight yeah. You know what I mean. You yeah. could do with Brighton doing something there, and Newcastle dropping something. just to you know just to give that extra impetus for what they're fighting for. Really. Yeah, I think if you. Think back to the start of the year when it was literally Bajetovic was the only thing that gave us any optimism whatsoever. And he goes and gets injured. And then now suddenly over the last few games, we've seen this change in formation, this new role of Trent pushing inside. And offensively, it's looked strong and Curtis has looked good. But I think last night for the first time, the clean sheet was so important because yeah, yeah. defensively, OK, we were a little bit all over the place. And once again, our player of the season, Alisson, had to come to the rescue a couple of times. But that clean sheet's really important. I think the mentality of the players when they've gone back into training today, I think this you know, coming up this week is our fifth game in fifteen ga fifteen games or something like that. So they'll have been back in today 
But I think it's just something for them to hold on to. You know, Virgil looked a little bit back to his best last night. And, yeah. you know, there's was, there was plenty of positives. And we're definitely moving in the right direction. And let's be honest, we need it. Because the Jude Bellingham news today kicked me in the balls. And I was a bit like, oh, I was just hoping beyond hope that it was all, oh, it's not happening. It's not happening. Wink, wink. Yeah. And now it actually looks like it isn't happening. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, thank God we kept a clean sheet. I want to talk about one man in particular from the game, Steve. Um, and I, I'll be careful how we do it when we talk about Liverpool players. Because I think there's a temptation to just go into full-on slander when we talk about football as well. Like, who aren't the best player on the pitch week in, week out. And let's be honest, people still slander players who are the best player on the pitch week in, week out sometimes. Um, I want to talk about Darwin Nunes. Um... And I'm going to preface this by saying I think there's every chance that after a, a, a proper summer training, you know, maybe an intense language course, whatever, there's, there's time. Get a Duolingo. Yeah, get a, yeah, get him on the Duolingo app over the over the summer, and he could you know he could hit the ground running and absolutely smash it for Liverpool years to come. That game last night was the first time I've really looked at him and gone, I'm a little unsure that he will how he fits into Liverpool at all, let alone in now or in six months or whatever. Yeah, it, I don't think this change of formation is any good for him either. I'm, I'm not sure that's what he wants. I think he wants someone... You know, he, he wants the ball played in behind all the time, whereas this system really needs it from behind to drop in deep. Because if you've only, effect, effectively you've got Jones and, and Henderson split, someone's got to drop in to fill that hole. That's why Cody Gakpo, I think, is really... Him and Jones and Trent have probably been the three main beneficiaries of this system change. Maybe Canate as well, but... Nunes doesn't want that he wants the ball the other way that's what he wants all the time you look at the goal against Leeds that's how Darwin Nunes is going to score if he's going to score so all round there's things just to get better if he's going to play up front for a simple if, they, if this is Jürgen's plan to do this going forwards then Darwin's got work to do I think you know his decision making at times his first touch at times just needs a little bit of bit of refining he's I don't know he's a, bit of, he's a rough diamond isn't he? there's enough there to work with and he's, he's shown enough this season you know, his, his record's decent for for a fair season in a country brand new, etc., etc. But listen, I'd be, I'd be lying if I said you know I wasn't a little bit underwhelmed when you spend eighteen million quid on a player. You, you know you want him to be in the team every week, the best player, one of the best players. And he, he isn't that yet, but I don't think he, he just gets written off straight away. But I think there's there's definite work to be done with him because at the moment I, I think he's he's fifth choice out of five, and if Firmino was fifth, he might be sixth choice out of six. So yeah. he's got work to do. Um, I I'm probably not as down on him as. As you stay, to be yeah, honest with you, yeah. I think for me, Jurgen Klopp said last week to get into this side, you've got to show that you can press. And I know is you know you're gonna judge a player on his ability on the ball and stuff like that. But last night was the first time he legged it round Anfield. You yeah. know he loses that football and he goes and wins a penalty by trying to win the yeah. ball back. I agree. You I know? thought I thought he'd off the ball, but I thought he was. Yeah, no, and this right. is what and, and 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 that for me is him showing that he understands what Jurgen wants. And that's stage one for me, to be quite honest with you. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, I think he's been taking out the firing line. I think this new system probably it doesn't come natural to him. Whether he'll make it or not, we'll see in the fullness of time. I think there is an option there. I think that front three that played together last night didn't look as fluid as the three that have played the previous five games. But how many games has Salah, Nunes and, and Diaz it's played nice. together this season? You know, it's if it was they didn't play in, against Fulham in the first game of the season because that was Firmino, Salah and Diaz. I mean, how many times has Nunes actually started with that? So there's, you've got to give a little bit of consideration to that as well for me. So first thing, you're going to work hard for the team. You worked hard for the team. Yep. Can you not swat the ball at someone from five yards away? That's probably the next thing I'm going to be asking him to do because <laughs> he nearly took Fabinho out. Yeah. Full stop with that pass last night on the edge of the penalty area, didn't he? And then secondly, can you start to find the way in? I agree with you on the Gakpo point. I think it's a good point. It does seem to work like this, but I mentioned the other week, I see Gakpo working with Jota because Jota wants to get into the box. Yeah. Diaz doesn't want to get into the box quite as often. He wants to come round the box. So I think there's space there. And I think Manchester City have shown in this formation, you can have a tip of the spear at the point of it, at the point of attack. We're not there yet, but we're early days. So I'm okay with him right now. Yeah, what you take? I think that, sorry, I think the Benfica fans will have had the same point to yourself yeah, yeah, after this yeah. first season there. He only played a handful of games. He only mm -hmm. scored a handful of goals. Well, it's, I think it's similar, actually, the amount of goals and the games he's played. I think they probably got to the end of the season and went, wait a minute, we broke the bank to bring this kid in and he's not really produced it for us. And then the second season, he was averaging a goal a game. He was the golden boot winner in Portugal and everything else. So yep. I think for me, the language thing is a big barrier. Mm -hmm. and he's 23 years of age as well. you know. And this, 
we are a, a much bigger club than Benfica, and I think the spotlight is really on him. And he's come in the same time Haaland's come in. Yeah. And even though we've not drawn comparisons, and to be fair, the national media haven't gone, they've kind of completely yeah. gone off that point now. It's a, it's a dead point. But I think him himself, he's probably looking himself in the mirror going, that could have been me, that could have been my first season, you know. Yeah. Could be a different type of player, but I think his own personal drive, the kid's clearly a winner. Yeah. And I think his own drive, I think he'll want to learn English. The Duolingo thing, <laughs> funny, it's a joke, but... You know, he's got to be he's got to be having English lessons every day. Yeah. Communication is key and getting him to settle is key as well. So I think he'll come good next season, I really do. I think he needs to like just chill a bit as well. Like he feels like he, he gets in his own head a little bit, you know. And he's he said as much. He had a, an interview recently where he was like he was quite down on himself and he was yeah. quite like he was saying the same things. I, it hasn't gone as well as I expected. And he said the same thing. It kind of happened at Benfica and I, I turned it round, but I just feel like some, and, and hopefully Jürgen is doing this, and I think it might be the point you're making, Chris, is just taking him out of it a little bit, might be doing him a, a bit of good, yeah. because it does look like, he looks like, you know, we, we saw with the head butt, and we've seen him shushing crowds, and he giving the ears to crowds and stuff away fans, it does feel like he's in his own head a little bit at times as well, but what I would say is that he's got, he's got all the attributes, I think, to be just out of this world good, even though if he, if he put it all together, and I, I, I take Nick's point as well, like he did this exactly what he went through at Benfica, is that, He's got pace, power, strength. He can that he can finish. He, he he really can. He's it's more it's more his decision making at times I question a little bit. Like it always feels like if it looks like he should run left, he goes right. Or I think there's a bit of miscommunication with Trent yesterday, for example, when and I actually put that one on Alexander Arnold. He makes the run, he doesn't find them. It's whether do you do you haven't do you have an off quite figured out how that he was goes? Made, yeah? There was loads made out of that, wasn't there? Yeah. That was on Trent. Trent should have passed it to him. Trent pass. Hit the fucking defender. I yeah, thought yeah. that's what Trent was annoyed at. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I think Trent was more annoyed with himself. And himself. That's what I that thought. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And but it's it. I'm with you. And that's that's kind of it. It just feels like they're not quite there. It, it feels like Gapo, and it might be the English thing. Gapo speaks really good English. It might be he's walked in, and it just it seems to have clicked straight away with him. It clicked with Jota. It pretty much clicked with Luis Diaz. It's just been a while, I think, since we've we've signed a player, especially a forward who we've had to be patient with. Mm-hmm. I think maybe we've we've just been spoiled because every pretty pretty much all of them have just waltzed in the team. <laughs> And gone straight away, bang, there's goals, there's something, there's something for you. And he's probably the first one for a while who hasn't. John Gibbons in the comments here says, rubbish. We had King Kenny, he couldn't speak a word of English. <laughs> 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 uh, very, very good. Uh, Ian, what have, you, what have you made of him? He's clearly, but he's clearly loved by the, by the people yeah. in, the, in the crowd. I, I like him, I think he's got all the attributes to be an absolute beast. Yeah. Uh, but I think, unfortunately, if you face Mane, uh, and we had the best forward line probably I've ever seen in my lifetime, the way it clicked, the way it was. Mm-hmm. He's come in, big bucks, people are expecting a lot from him. Uh, don't know where he should play. Uh, he's always a little bit undecided. Where Cop seems to be undecided where to play him. And I think the comparisons with Haaland, who obviously he's been brought in to play the system, built around him, and he's a goal-scoring machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I think he's probably uh, beating himself up a little bit over that. He's looking at Haaland. You know, obviously, what we had previously, the way it was such a machine and it was so well-oiled and brilliant to watch. So I think there's lots of... For a young kid who's come across into this country for the first time, one of the biggest clubs in the world, is a lot of pressure. I think next year, I think he'll know the system, he'll he'll be uh, he'll be settled, hopefully, the language, and he'll have an understanding of what, what he's got to do. And I think that's what Klopp will be doing. So I just think we've got to give the lad time. I think he's put from a... You know, as a... As a Center half myself, you look at him, you think, Oh my word, he's six foot two, three, yeah. he's fleet footed, he's powerful. But I will say, thank God Jota got that chance against Tottenham and not him. Yeah, mm. uh, and that's no reflection on him. I'm just, at this present moment in yeah. time, I put more money on Jota doing what he did than Harl, then Harl, and then uh, then Darwin. So for me, and like everything, give him a chance, let him settle next year. We'll have a full pre-season. We'll probably have some new midfielders come in. The system, the, the team will be a, an evolutionary process and then hopefully he can be the tip of that spear. But And again, I just... Diaz yesterday, he's magnificent. Yeah, he is. You know, in that position, he's just so good, isn't he? Yeah. So good. That's, but that's almost like Darwin Nunez's problem is that he's come out the team and Gapo's gone in and he's playing the number nine and looking like Bobby Firmino, but six foot four. And he hasn't had the pressure. Mm-hmm. Exactly, the pressure. and yeah. now Diaz is coming on the left hand side, and you go, ah, that's what it's meant to look like. And then Jota yeah. does the finish that he yeah. that, That's what I was about yeah. to say is that it's going to be hard for him to get in, and I still don't know. I, I might, dis- you might disagree. Me. I think his best spell for Liverpool has been when he's been played on the left. I, I, I think playing on the left and getting into the box a yeah. bit like Jota does it. And I think that's when he's been at his strongest. But 
he's not going to play on the left because Diaz is better than him, and Jota might be as well. He's got he's got a, a real battle to find a place in the team. That then that's going to be his issue. It's all well and good saying like, we'll give him time, we'll give him games. It's why I think Europa League is important, actually qualification for it, because I think we need enough games to get all these yeah. lads minutes. Because yeah. I think you know if Liverpool playing a Champions League final tomorrow, he wouldn't be starting. And his aim now is to make sure that if we're saying that in twelve months time that he is in the team. Yeah. Um. I I just again it's it's hard. I think he might be a left winger, but I don't think Liverpool bought him as a left winger. I think Liverpool bought him to try and be a centre yeah, forward. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure at the at this moment. Like I say, I'm not being down on him because I think yeah. as a player you can see it all there. No, but I think everyone is being yeah. a bit down on him, and I don't, but I don't think that's unjustified. I don't think again this is why I wanted to be clear in saying this. I don't think everyone's saying he's shit and then like he's rubbish and he should never be at Liverpool and blah blah blah, getting lost and all that. Everyone said the same things. You can see there's a player in there somewhere. But it feels like he's having a bit of a lot of diminishing returns as the season's wearing on. All that exuberance that he kind of burst onto the scene with is, is gone now. He looks like he doesn't really suit playing a left wing because he's not got enough guile. You see Diaz exactly. and he can drop a shoulder and he'll beat yeah, a man yeah. and he'll twist and turn yeah. you inside out. Yeah. Jota and Gakpo have just got a bit more class when it comes to just being in and around the penalty area. So he looks a bit of an odd fit at the moment. But on the, the left wing thing, he scored more. He, he, his goal rate was much better for Benfica from the left than it was from centre forward. And this season, he's played 14 times on the left wing. He's got seven goals and two assists. It's eight and 26 as a centre forward. And it's, it's like, I don't think he's a winger. He's like a left forward. That makes yeah. it. And we don't actually have one of those. He's more. He's a bit like how Manny would want to do it, except he isn't as good defensively as Sadio Manny. He's a he's a forward who wants to play out on the left. Well, that's how it feels to me. Um, he's like I say, um, I think if you'd have said to that, if you'd have said like a new signing gets that goal return first year, I think everyone go yes. Yeah, how many goals is he on total? Did you say so? He's on fifteen that's total, fair. fifteen yeah, really goals good. and four. Assists. What I thought was interesting because it's a comparison I've had in my head and done it for a few weeks. He's played two thousand three hundred minutes for us in his first season so far, and obviously he's still more to go. Manny? This Compared is. To Manny's I'm going to compare him to Manny, yeah. So this is this is. I'm still talking Darwin at the moment, but 41 appearances, 15 goals, four assists in 2,300 minutes. Sadio Mane's first season for Liverpool played 2,410 minutes, um, 13 goals and eight assists. So you know he scored more goals, got half the assists, but as far as Mane is coming from the league as well, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And not playing in Champions League either. By the way, you know that that's another that's another yeah. thing. He's got he's got forty or four and eight in the Champions League. Nunes, yeah. which is to, to and that, make, that makes sense because he was he done well in the Champions League for Benfica as well. So he knows that. That's what I'm saying. I think next year, I think we are going to be in the Europa League. I wouldn't be shocked if Jurgen said, right, you play every Thursday. You're gonna that that's his way to to get himself more settled in the team, right? Because you can't. I don't think you'd be wanting Mo Salah to play every Thursday, etc. He might he might say to, to to Darwin, that Good luck trying to tell Mo he can't play games of footy. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. anyone's yeah. ever tried it before. Yeah, it's, good, <laughs> yeah, it's, a good, it's a fair point, but I'm just, I just think that maybe that's his way to to almost bed himself in. Because I, I agree. I think he's looked better in Europe this season and forward more often than he did at um, than he did in the league. It was around the, the it was around Champions League fixtures when he scores the header against West Ham as well, doesn't he? And he he has a good little run. He obviously scores against Real Madrid, so there's, there's definitely something to work with. I just don't I don't know. It's just it feels like. Again, impatience. He's got fifty. He's got fifteen goals. My, my, my biggest concern there. over him is probably like the the way that we play it does the formation suit. And I think you said that right off the bat, isn't it? Is that like I think that it can work because I see Manchester City do it with Haaland, but I don't know that it can work. And it looked like when he signed him in the summer, he knew he had Diaz on the left. He knew he was going to have Salah on the right, yeah. and and Nunes was a perfect fit for the middle. Now with the signing the Gakpo, it's like well. Who is the middle man? Who's mm-hmm. the main man? And that, that for me is where we're sort of and is, with it. And is that a course correction? That's the biggest well, that's, question. Yeah, that's it. And like, with the new formation, how does he fit into that? Yeah. Has this always been in the offering? Anyone would, would anyone consider cashing in on in the summer? No, definitely not. I wouldn't. Not at all. I think th- for me, it's it's a confidence game, and you know, I think the the reason he performed so well second season, more than likely with Benfica, is he did that season to yeah. get his feet under the table. Second season, a full plunge pre-season under his belt. He knows he's the main man. They just broke the bank for him the year before. He knows he's playing every game. He knows the press. So he'll know his role, even though he did go left and he did go down the middle for them. He knows he's on the team sheet. I think with Liverpool, as we just pointed out then, I think each week he's thinking, I hope I make the team. I hope I get on the pitch today. And that's that's different. It'll affect you a different way, especially when, again, you're a 23-year-old lad and you think, I've come to this big club and actually... 
is the better player is either around me? Am I am I am I even gonna play? So when he does play, he's put himself under a different type of pressure. Mm. I, I think yeah, a good preseason under his belt this year. I, I think he for me, he's the long term solution down the middle. I see him being you know, I see Gakpo being the stop gap and I see him being the long term solution mm, down the middle. But that's controversial. It's a big it's a big summer ahead for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Gakko's been fantastic. I yes. think he's been far better. No, that's no game. Uh, this isn't it. I think he's been so quick in adjusting and looking weird. I thought yesterday when he comes on, it was like Firmino just knitting everything together, and we just looked that system just like looked fluid again. Uh, so yeah, for me, then the day he's in the the best manager in the world and bringing uh, players through and empowering them and giving them confidence. So he's in the right place. I think we've got to give him next year. Uh, hopefully he kicks on and then we re-evaluate at the end of the year yeah. with the system change potentially with Trent playing where he's playing is that is it the right team for him and then if it isn't then he's had a chance yeah. we've had a chance to look at him I think that's fair then yeah. but, uh, can't beat him after a year can't I, think, uh, I, think, I think he's going no, to be no uh, when stats stack up for the first season yeah. Yeah. player yeah. 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 Wrong that's with the other that? thing no. the, the positive just got 45 that. goals like Haaland he's on now it's off the scale and he's in the best team in the world yeah. you know when he's the scene built around him it's, it, it, we can't make them comparisons we've had a crap season teams in complete you know uh, rebuild and he's been dropped into that team yeah. In a rebuilding process, lack of confidence. Everybody's lacking confidence. So at the moment, it'd be so unfair to say cash in on him. And also, what would you get for him? You wouldn't get eighty. No. Mm. If you were, you know yeah. you'd be losing so, and then suddenly he could go somewhere and just you no know, take Explodes off, like. and you're like, oh, what have we done there? Yeah. Klopp doesn't do that. No, no. Liverpool well, don't do that. As well, mate. It's 15, 15 goals, four assists, and when he hasn't had a good season, like you know, what what can he do if he has a good season? Exactly. That's when he can start posting those Benfica numbers. So yeah. I think that's an encouragement thing. Is that I think we'd all sit here and say, yeah, he's been underwhelming. You know, you give him a rate and it wouldn't be a high one. But if that's the floor, then that, that I think that's a real bonus for the pool because we always thought, can you get tw- can you get three twenty goals a season forwards? That's what Sadio Mane became. The like Darwin's going to end up pretty close to that. If not, you know, he might get he might get five in the next whatever. But he's going to be there or thereabouts. And and then, like you say, another year in it, he should be better. I think that's a positive because the thing that like, you lost when you lost Sadio, you know, most others he'll score goals all the time. But Sadio was really the only other goal scorer we had until so, you know Jota was in now, but the, the fitness stuff it was always it was the Mo show and then Sadio show. Yeah. Like we lose him, you need somebody to score those goals. Gap, I agree, Gapo looks like he can do it. Um but Darwin's showing he can do it as well. Well we had there was a point where we were going we had the top three goal scorers in the league last yeah. last year when we Jota's fit because he, he's he is that and yeah. you know and it was a great point actually in just in honor of it being star wars day um dark jar jar here says uh would rather have five players scoring 15 plus goals a season each gapo and nunes are different options we've needed this for years and mm-hmm. that's that's the thing isn't it you know because you've banged on about the you know, the change of the substitutions five subs now yeah you can win games from the bench more than you've ever been able to before and we st- we've actually that's what we saw against Fulham actually it doesn't ultimately change the landscape because we don't score any more goals for doing it but the idea that you can take two amazing footballers off and effectively bring two other ones on good luck good luck keeping that I, out I truly believe that the manager most top managers haven't clocked on to that yet and started yeah. to build the squad like yeah. I, can, I get to use five subs in every competition yeah. I think it is going to change the makeup of loads yeah, of squads it's yeah. just yeah. we as fans are going to have to look at it more like that's a that's a half an hour option, yeah. not ten minutes at the end anymore. You just change a couple of players because yeah. you can afford to. Like yeah. baseball, when they bring the finisher on, kind of thing. You might be able, you yeah. might be able to like tactical subs. Where you're right, I thought, I thought last actually what happened when we signed Luis Diaz last January was that that's what got us so close. Is that we th- those bench, you know Liverpool were in tight games sometimes, and then you look at the bench and then, right here comes Jota, and here comes Diaz, or here comes Firmino, and here comes Diaz, or here comes Jota, whatever it was. We had six of them then, obviously as well. Um, that's what. Well, even seven, you know, Taki Minamino was getting getting involved a little bit, but that I think that's a bit Diffock, yeah, big Divock, yeah. I think I think he was one of six. Did miss someone off? But the problem is, is that he looks like he looks like the Divock Origi replacement at the moment. And Who knew this? Mm. Oh, that's harsh. That's harsh. Did the did the Rigi ever get fifteen in a season for us? Yeah, probably not. But to the point about what he's doing, he's like he doesn't fit our style centre forwards. He's fast, so we'll put him on the wing. He can't score goals from both positions, but he doesn't, at the moment, when you're at your best, lads, he doesn't look like he's... Let's frame it another way. Did Coutinho ever score 15 in a season mm-hmm. for us playing left wing? Probably. Left forward? Yeah. Probably. I mean, not like not often. Yeah. 
Like, you know what I mean? And, and everyone was creaming the pants over Coutinho for years, and myself included in that. Like, and they, and people are still asking for creator like Phil Coutinho and all yeah. that type of yeah. stuff. The lad's done it in his first season. Yeah. What I was say, though, on Coutinho that... played I, every game. Yeah. yeah. I also think that on that, that last point you made there is, like, I still think, like Ian said before, that chance forced the Jota, that's who you wanted to fall to. It looked right like... Now. That, yeah, yeah, right now. Right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, right it looks now, like yeah. Gakpo is one who can make his own goals. I think Darwin looks like a lad who... He'll need to, you know, he needs to be the, the, the focal point of the team. Well, we haven't had that, but we haven't actually played to a guy like that. That's what I'm saying. Like ever, that, ever yeah, on the yeah. cop, really, since the early days when like Origi playing a four-two-three-one or whatever, and we'd be playing him in behind, and that was it. Like look at the Real Madrid goal, Nunes scores. That's that. That's and even the Fulham his Fulham contribution to the first game of the season. It's all him on the edge of the six-yard box with the ball. Come arriving to him and him doing little flicks past the goalie and all that kind of stuff. Again, we said it on plenty of shows. Erling Haaland, okay, he started to add a couple more more interesting goals to his repertoire. I mean, odds are it was going to happen. He scored a fucking million. Um, but it, all his goals are just kicking it after kicking it at the goal and it goes <laughs> in and then you scored. Yeah, you know because that's the kind of service that he's being delivered. One so, of yeah. the things I think with, with the Nunes stuff is like it's it's hard to evaluate any player this season for yeah. me because like no, exactly. say you're a Red Bull F ones team right and you've done all these aerodynamic changes to your car brilliant but the engine's fucking broken like, how can you judge how good the aerodynamics are how can you judge your forwards when the midfield in the engine room of your car yep. isn't quite there do you know what yeah, I mean yeah yeah that's, point. that's true absolutely what do you think the plan was though Chris when they bought him that, that's right he was going to I... score loads of goals okay, I think wait. that's why they, you know, they blamed 80 million quid on him I think that's what it was and he was going to be he was going to be middle of a three I, I think definitely so. think so yeah. 100% yeah cool yeah. well yeah fair enough yeah. Just, like I say, it's, it's making cast iron judgments on anyone on this season. I think it's quite foolish because it's just been an absolute. But if anyone can make someone succeed, it's Trent in that role as well. Because yeah. he's, you know, we saw about De Bruyne and we saw about Ireland. Where you look at Trent, don't you? Having the freedom, if, if they link up and they start playing with each other a lot, and the runs, if he makes them runs, no one, it's it best player in the league potentially to find them from them runs, isn't it? You'll find them. So sure I think that'll be fascinating. Leeds that goal down yeah. scored. It was yeah. a brilliant ball. No, by it was Trent. a brilliant ball by Trent, and it was a great finish. So I think that's something to look forward to. There you go. I think we've conclusively proven nothing. Um, but then that's <laughs> what talking about football is all about, right? <laughs> no, one, um, no one wants to sell them. No, good. Oh, I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I think the Rigi shelf was ash. There you go. <laughs> cool. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just. I love Jim. I'm just I'm just a conduit. Off to a tweet. <laughs> I'm a conduit uh, for the comments as well. I am. I also do believe that a little bit. Um, right. So uh, we're going to take a very, very short break. When we return, uh, we're going to be ranking. Steve's going to be picking up all them bottles off the floor, and we're going to be ranking um, the plus all-time Premier League great last-minute winners in a bit. Hey, stop what you're doing right now. Prepare yourself, prepare your family, prepare your kids, prepare your babysitters. Because on Friday the 5th of May, we are having a quiz night, party night at Hotel Anfield. And the tickets are available right now, but your time to get them is running very, very short. If you like Liverpool trivia, if you like Liverpool songs, if you like just laughter and happiness in your life, then come down to Hotel Anfield on Friday the 5th of May. The tickets are available right now on Ticket Quarter. The link will be there or thereabouts. Get involved, get your tickets bought uh, and come and party with us. It's going to be Liverpool trivia, it's going to be Liverpool games, Liverpool challenges, it's going to be amazing prizes on offer and Dave Jags from the Ragamuffins is going to be playing live music as well. Uh, so come and join me, Chris Pajak, for the biggest party night in advance of the Liverpool Brentford game. And yeah, maybe you win yourself some boss prizes, have a good time, and put some smiles back on some red faces. Yes, last chance saloon to get your quiz tickets in. Go to Ticket Quarter, search Red Men Quiz, and that'll come up on Google, or you can click the link from the description underneath. It is tomorrow evening. It's going to be boss. There will be opportunities if you want to just come along and pay on the door, but uh, I can't guarantee there'll be any prizes for you if you do it that way, because, you know, this is all well calculated. Um, so, yeah, get your tickets. Come down. Have a laugh with us at Hotel Anfield Friday evening. Uh, it's going to be a belter. Right, it is time to rank Liverpool's best last-minute winners. Um First off, huge love to Andrew Beasley, who's been uh, stockpiling this list um, for however long. But yeah, that's basically where we pulled it from. So at base tune to red, if you want to give him some love on Twitter. We've got 10 suggestions here. 
There were more, there was loads more, which is quite funny. It's 40 odd we've had or something. Loads, <laughs> bloody loads. I've managed to whip that it down. Just on the air again. <laughs> or, or gen- <laughs> genuinely, like, it's like, yeah, there's a, there's a handful in the early days of the, the Premier League, and then, then it really starts to ramp up to the point where I'm trying to think, I think all but one of these, yeah. Yeah. All but one of these are Jurgen Klopp era. Well, recently mm. by eh? Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll start with the we'll start with the oldest. Um for the sake of it, let's get it out the way. You got the rules. Oh, sorry, you're right. Not so much one rule is that we can only have one in the top rank. Okay. Okay. So only one can be number one, but we can have multiples in two, three, four, or five. Okay. And your main consideration points, just for conversational purposes. Did you mean to put the blue at the bottom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Think about it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, playing to an audience echoing real life well, should, um, we, should we maybe take them I mean off? it might have to come off the board uh, in a couple of weeks time yeah absolutely um, replace it with a, a barely one <laughs> yeah. clap, clap, yeah. and clap it and blue um, the main consideration points for this are size of the occasion the standing of the scorers so are they are they a nailed on legend were they a fringe player how, okay, player? The, how does that legend status work if they are crap and they were a fringe player, for example. Do they get more? I'll I'll just it's just a it's just a point of consideration. I'll let okay. you work out what where, where, where you feel standing on that is. The opponent and the final consideration point is hilarity. Okay, right. Well, we know which one. The box special. <laughs> First up for consideration then is uh, Neil Meller, ninety second minute against Arsenal, two one win. In 2004. Is this the one where he said, I'm tired, so I just did it? Yes. Oh, brilliant. Stick him there for now. We'll move on about. It was a great goal, Yeah. Uh, Harry Kuehl nearly gets knocked unconscious, I think, by somebody. And then rather than help his mate, Neil Mellor goes, I'm just belting this. Yeah. She, you she can Campbell see him on the floor there. Yeah, they, oh, yeah, there yeah. Is. He's, he's nearly dead, the Harry Kuehl there. Yeah, yeah, just typical, there. that's typical Harry, Harry Kuehl pose, that isn't it? <laughs> no, Lying yeah. on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> mate, that was an absolute worldie of a goal, though, if you remember it. He yeah. went up for the header and missed it. And then Kuehl got taken out by Sol Campbell. And then he just smashed it, but he picked his spot like he probably yeah, chipped out over the keeper's mm. head. And I think under the circumstances, in, he only played because Barosh was out and she say was out. We had, literally had no one else, and Mella played. And um, were you covering Liverpool at this no, time? No, I remember. I remember seeing a video with him. Where he was getting interviewed by, and he, he was getting interviewed. And he was talking about this goal. And he was talking about it being his favourite goal and the reasons he behind didn't it. Many others didn't. Oh. Maybe didn't. He only had a handful. Yeah, exactly. But I'll tell you what, though, most of them are big he goals. Big goals, goals yeah, big yeah, important big goals. Well. He scored an Olympiakos game. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and nice. assisted the win. That was a world. That's a worldie. That goal. It's so good. It, it's Jens Lehmann. He just. He just. I loved the goal. Just, yeah. just about goes past us. Yeah. But ultimately, I mean, it, it, they it, were so much better than us then as well. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, without a doubt. So it was Champions League all four or five years, wasn't it? That, mm-hmm. that, yeah, that, yeah. That so that, that's it's around that sort of spell. It's the end. Of, yeah. It's the end of two thousand and four when the Olympiacos game is in that little spell. Because as as Nick rightly says, Liverpool have got a, an absolute dearth of injuries at the time. He says out because he's broken his leg against Blackburn, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Barros was constantly in and out all that season. So yeah, Neil Mella gets chucked in. Yeah, oh good. And and he. I, I think was, the fact that it is Mella though as well, yeah. It, yeah. you know, it wasn't Mo, it wasn't yeah. Sadio or something like that. It was the fact that Mella stepped up in this moment yeah. and buried it. It wasn't lucky, it wasn't bundled over the line. Obviously, no, it was a great goal. It was a, it was it was a, a world class goal. So, yeah, yeah. yeah and I remember, I remember the ground. It was absolutely let off. It was fantastic. Yeah. So. It was a big game, big that goal. Was, uh, back, I was back in the press box in those days as well, working <laughs> for the Echo. So I was managing. That was definitely one where I was jumping all over the place for I, sure. I was managing a pub in Sheffield at the time, and I got on the big screen, and I, I, I legged it around that place. I did laps when that goal went in. I was sat watching it with a mate who supported Arsenal. It was one of the best, the best feelings watching a game, watching a game. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether it'll stay up number one, but I'm, no, I, you know, I, I'm happy won't. for it to, I'm happy for it to be to be in strong I reckon that'll make top five me. I reckon that could stay on the board. I do, yeah. honest. Yeah. Right. Sounds okay. We'll move on then to a very early in the Jurgen Klopp run. Um, it was Adam Lallana, 95th minute, five-four win over Norwich, 2016. This was. I mean, we talk about the big moments in sort of the Klopp era and everyone references. This is the glasses one. Yeah. This is the glasses one. So this is like people talking about West Brom and going and leading the you know, the players to the crowd and all that kind of stuff. This was the January. It was the first time where you're like, 
this is the absolute madness and wildness of Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Won't give up. We'll go to the last Heavy possible kick. Yeah, mm. exactly. Just throw Stephen Corkin on up front. <laughs> yeah. get, that, get, that, get that all going as well. Um, that was a crazy game. That, that you know, it's a good finish as well. It, it, it's a uh, it, it doesn't it's into the floor I think and, and it bounces up like he's quite cool and calm. It's, what's mad is that. That's one of those where it looks like a goal before he's even kicked it. Because the way the ball falls down, you just see him run onto it. So, oh my God, he's going to score this. I think everybody knew. Uh, it, I don't think it was as good of a goal as, as the Mella one, but you're right, it was the it was the first time, because we had a few that season, and, and obviously in Europe as well, where it was like, we were a bit crap, but also it was like this never never say die, we never give up attitude kind of thing. And Yeah, it was a, that was just I mean, that, 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 a bonkers that game. That game, we, we, uh, we asked Liverpool to open up Anfield to schools. You know, for the kids that couldn't go in mm-hmm. uh, to ever. So a lot of them, the first time you were in Anfield, they put a meal on and were watching the game. And I never forget when that went in, you've just seen like 100 kids think from all the <laughs> And magic, you've just seen it. So you could see instantly they were just in love yeah, with Liverpool yeah. and the it. game. And it was in Anfield. They had Mighty Red bouncing off the walls, but all the kids were just <laughs> you know, bouncing around on Smarties and you're seeing the goal and you're just thinking, they've just been hooked. Yeah, they've yeah. been hooked. So I bet loads of them kids now have been hooked for life from that goal. Yeah. I love Jürgen's comment, wasn't it? Was it? It's hard to find your glasses when you can't. I mean, you haven't got your glasses on. It's Scooby Doo land. Always right? a problem. It's like a lot of times I go round wearing my glasses. If I only had my glasses to find me fucking glasses. <laughs> Above or below? What do you think? I think it's below Mel. Yeah, but... I think it's below. Yeah. In the context of the game, just the quality of the strike. I... Oh, yeah, it's not a joke. Sure. It's not. It's not Arsenal, isn't it? That was. I watched. That game that was we were due to go in to my daughter was due to be born we going in to be induced and that game was in the afternoon we went into the hospital in the night so I, we were waiting in the delivery suites I was watching match the day on my phone watching the highlights of that back what a day what a day that was unreal um, okay next one up Sadio Mane ninety fourth minutes where is it uh, there it is versus Everton one nil twenty sixteen uh, that was the day when someone ruined my shoes with Bovril. <laughs> some fucking Evertonian oh what a day some friggin Evertonian threw bother at me when we scored that that was out of this world that, that, that should be number one for the, for hilarity of it I, I, it goes above Mella for me that being oh, in yeah. that ground when that went in it was unbelievable it was so good the flare gets through on and that, every, and then I th- we all thought the ref had disallowed if he blows his whistle and then Manny looks and then he realises, no, he's just telling you to get away from this this gang of lunatics because it was going crazy. The, yeah, everything about it, they were, they were going mad because it was a nil-nil. Um, the goalie's crap, which is, makes, it, makes it funnier, like I don't know what he's doing off it. I thought that was, yeah, that's, that, that, might, that, that, might, that might be my favourite ever. Just being in the ground at the time, some of these I wasn't in the yeah, yeah. Being that good to someone that went in was just out of this I world. I think when you get a song from the goal... <laughs> it's, it's it's important, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's an important moment. Merry Christmas, ever. Yeah, yeah, that that must that gives it a bit of oomph as well, doesn't it? Wasn't it? Um, it was only that late in the game as well because Barkley had tried to kill Henderson. Barkley should have been sent oh, off. Yeah, and that was when the that Henderson was getting treatment, and that's why it went in deep into oh, post ninety minutes. They always so. do it to themselves. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but this was the beginning of. What's the most Everton way to lose a football match? Um, it involves and wood, war that follows. Yeah, it involves woodwork it was, and, and it's dodgy always, goalkeeper. It's always December. Like we've made Christmas jumpers out of these goals the following year for about four years on the mount. That one's was called Last Christmas, and we had a picture of Marnie with all the smoke behind it. Sold a thousand of them. Nice one, Everton. <laughs> I think we missed the year once where we didn't actually do it, and we, we did just did, and we did last last Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess it needs much. Can okay. I can I put this in one? Yeah. Okay. Slide. Well, you're gonna slide those two down. Yeah. For now. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Maybe a bit of an outside shout, but I think one that Chris probably holds closer to his heart the most. And maybe you actually think maybe you do see. Is it Clavin? It is Ragnar Klavan, ninety fourth minute versus Burnley, twenty eighteen, two one win. Was that the New Year's Day? That was the yeah yeah away. That was a bell to that. I told the story in a couple of weeks. I watched that while my missus was giving birth. That was the one I was yeah. I saw, I, she was literally giving birth, and I had push one. push. I'm already pushing it. No, I'm talking to Ragnar. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to the lads. Get on with it. Yeah, it was yeah. That was um. 
Good, uh, they just equalised, Andy. Like, and it was a real yeah. kick in the nuts. There was a let off in the away in that day. That was a that was a hell of a hell of a day. And I think in these ones, like Mane, I expect it. You know, we'll come on to ones where the forwards are the main guys who do it. But when it's Ragnar Clavan, yeah, like, and yeah. I know it's only Burnley and all that yeah. type of stuff, but. What a way to go and win a game yeah. of footy with Ragnar with a big head. Like. I'm pretty sure Lovren's header was going in and Ragnar just took the glory. That's right, it was right against the post, wasn't it? <laughs> Bundled it over. But haven't we just signed Van Dijk? And but the pressure was Is on. That... Okay. Wasn't that, wasn't that yeah. that window where Van Dijk was coming in, been in all the press? Because he was Everton in the cup, was it, a few days yeah. later or something? So those two were playing, knowing <laughs> this could be my last no. game, because <laughs> mate, it's coming in on big money. Yeah, the and the two go. of them set it up to score the winner oh, at the end. It was yeah. glorious, like... Uh, yeah, Is Clavan it, stole Lovren's goal, and yet it was Clavan that got bombed out. Poor sportsmanship, get out. Um, does it knock any of our three on the board down? Well, place? Personal experience, I was in the way in that day, so I'd have it above the the Norwich one. But like, I've got no arguments with it being maybe level with the Norwich I one. I think or... it's level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense to me. Oh, I'll yeah, my arms. Goose. This is probably the most obscure one. I'm not sure if people remember this, but I, I very much do. Um, James Milner, penalty, 95th minute versus Leicester, 2019. We win the game 2-1. And um, it's one of those games. This is the one where Salah gets injured. Um, That's right, yeah. Yeah, by... Hams a child three years who snaps him for no reason whatsoever, and it's pure Leicester just being horrible. And then Liverpool get the penalty. Get I think it's Manny. Manny basically dives, dives yeah. and gets the penalty <laughs> yeah. in the last minute. Yeah. Uh, and James Milner steps up and slots it. Very easy. Yeah. Was I there with you that game? Uh, I watched that in the main stand. I don't the main stand. I watched that in my dad's seat. I think. Um, in the in the Kenny for some reason I can't remember why I was on the cop for it and um, I could tell Manny died from where I was <laughs> <laughs> no, no idea how he got that pen it was a cool penalty though wasn't it it was a I have absolutely no recollection of this game no it was a, wow. it was a I think again it was a, a winter game wasn't it like Christmassy time I think I'm, I'm right in saying I'm wrong on that but I, I've got an elite mentality when it comes to watching football I was always just on to the next one, yeah, big one. <laughs> I mean, can a penalty really be go above any of these ones well context of the game isn't it exactly it was a, it was a big game at the time were they champions? Burning in mind, we are no, no. This is yeah, this is this, this is the title winning title. season. Oh yeah, nineteen twenty. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It was the it was to keep the win and run going, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which yeah, was this was the eighth game of the season. Yeah. We've won every game yeah. up until that point. Um, and I think you've got to remember, to obviously, with City, you can't afford to drop a game, can you? Yeah. You know, when they're going full pelt, and they're going full and pelt. Every game's yeah. massive, isn't that's it? Exactly Did they score early in this one? Or am I... they, I'll tell you exactly what happened in this one. So, they, um, Manny scored in the 40th minute, and now Madison equalised. James equalized. Madison, yeah, in front of the car. On the 80th, yeah, 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 I remember it. Um, I'm happy for it not to... For not to, to push high, I think, I think it's probably in. There's another one from that season which we're going to come on to, which I think will blow it off the water anyway. I thought um, it was number four for now. Okie dokie. Uh, and it's, this, is the, this is the next one that I'm going to bring up. Another one that Chris didn't know by looking at the picture. For shame, uh, it is Sadio Mane, 94th minute, Aston Villa, 2 1, Villa Park, 2019. Um, Liverpool are basically, yeah, set to capitulate. We've got. Adam Lallana playing in the six because we don't want Fabinho to pick up a suspension for the City game. And, yeah, Andy Robertson and Sadio Mane pull it out two goals in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, I, I, I have never felt at a way, I've never had an away experience quite like that. Me and Tom were on the very front row of the, uh, of the, away, of the away end and we ended up on the LFC TV inside video. Um of it and I'm I'm very grateful to the editors of that because there were moments where lo- no one was singing in that because it was all going horrendously wrong for us and they put a clip of me and Tom as the only two people singing which made us look dead good but that absolutely outrageous that's the, that for me the moment when I, I knew we were going to win the league that I think Andy Robertson said that in interview as well didn't he it was that, that day was when he thought yeah that was, we're, we're boxing this off it's a good editor as well it's like a near post into the far Far corner type thing. Contextually, um, which Joe's frantically typing away for me. Thanks, Joe. Uh, City were playing at the same time and scored a late winner themselves in yeah. that one. So City would have the gap would have closed ahead of us playing them, but instead Liverpool slammed the door on them with it. That was a good goal. It was a really good header. Yeah, I remember they, their fans have just been giving Virgil a bit as well, and then Virgil gives them it back. I think in the context of the history of what we were, it's high, pressure, it's we were high. after tie, isn't it? It's a that, bit, it was a big goal. Where are you going? Uh, two. 
Two. Yeah. Yeah. Happy with two? It's going to get moved, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You can't put up a winner against Everton, can you? <laughs> It's <laughs> a solid point. Okay, well, cool. it was against Villa. One of my best mates is a mad, mad yeah. Villa fan. So when there's that personal thing as well, yeah. where you get to see him and go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As, uh, yeah. It's f- next one is from this season, but it's not even the most recent one. Um, it is Fabio Carvalho, 98th minute at Anfield versus Newcastle, 2022, two-one win. Every, uh, that was going to be the start of the season, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> 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 the Reds are back and we just yeah. needed it. Um, Bloody hell. It was the first time where I'd noticed how much Newcastle time wasted. And it's funny, if you, you know, if you go on social media now, every game someone's playing against Newcastle, all you see is, oh my oh, God, then, these, yeah. all you do is time waste, time waste. And, and then they time wasted so long that we got a 98th minute winner against them. Um, yeah, I thought, oh, that's the making of him. That's the making of our season. Well, I haven't seen him since, and we've been crap. It's a really good goal, is Carvalho, though. Done. He scored against City this season as well, mm-hmm. didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. That was a belt of that. That's it's a that problem. He just smashed release. it into the roof of the net yeah. from about three yards out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Context wise, though. Context. Nah. 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 Down the bottom, I think, for context. Five? Yeah. You, can you throw it I mean, there? literally 40, nothing to happen. for them, yeah. yeah. If it would have been level with Newcastle now. Going for like second That's third true. place, but then it would have been a different gravy, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, okay, well, and speaking of similar context, and maybe this is one that will age better, it is Diogo Jota, 94th minute winner versus Tottenham Hotspur. Now, there's more three. hilarity in this one. Yeah, 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 your, your point of the, the funniness of it gives it extra points, it means it's, it's going to have to be up there. It's going to, sh- yeah, it's going to fly up the board, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, Richarlison doing the pigeon <laughs> and then doing what pigeons do, which is eating shit 30 <laughs> seconds later. <laughs> it's just a fucking goal, isn't it? You know what I mean? I like it. It's funny about it now in context. He, he, Klopp said he, 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 got in, he was injured in that game, so he was allowed to do the day. Watch when he sits down for a celebration. He sits down like me. Like his back, <laughs> he's, like, oh, oh, he's getting on the floor to try and do his little FIFA celebration. It, it, if it, it, with hilarity being a, a key points driver, it, it has to be quite high because Richarlison's celebration that he ex- he did three celebrations, yeah, yeah. And, and then the, for the, and then for his time wasting on the celebration to lead to us getting the time to score the winner and Klopp's Amsterdam. Klopp's Amsterdam goes as funny as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Walking away, hobbling away like that. Did you see what he said in this press conference? If I was a player, I'd be out for six weeks, but I'm not so I'm all right. <laughs> Even him just shouting in the ref's face is quite funny. Oh. Like that poor, what's he done? Like, what's that guy done? I don't think that guy had made a single decision all game. But he, he took the brunt of it. I think you? it was a brilliant goal as well. Yeah, it was an yeah. absolutely magnificent goal, wasn't it? You know, he knew what it, the, the ball was coming to him. He knew what he was going to do. It was yeah. a brilliant finish in the context of everything. What I was the let off like? Fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic. Well, something else that was. Except really... me, mate, you got off. Yep. Did he? <laughs> yeah. After the goal, he got off. He got off at two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why the people do it? <laughs> I the guy so I the, the lad next to me I won't name but you know he does he does watch periodically so he knows when I refer to things he does in matches and he, he, we, we have a little laugh about it he got off at three all because he was and I spoke to him the other day and I said mate and he went it was because it was Richarlison I just I just I, if it had been anyone else I'd have got just stuck it out but Richarlison just done it I was like nah, I'm not I'm not having that I'm getting I'm getting off that, that context though means it's got to fly off the board because yeah. it's got yeah. just enough. Yeah. Blue nose to it. It's got that whiff of it. Yeah. And, and, and Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, got, yeah. It's, got, it's got the yeah. most Tottenham thing ever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I think to... all the videos the next day as well of all like the Tottenham, you know, supporters who are videoing themselves doing live things and all that. All that stuff was just like gold. It's it also that he probably should have been sent off as well and wasn't. That I think that even that adds to the hilarity of it. Yeah. Because they were fuming about I think that. It was one. his first goal of the season, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. The Charles is first goal. Yeah, first goal. Like, yeah. 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 Tottenham, I think, yeah. in the league. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, potential context as well is, you know, I think that would have, like, destroyed our season. Mm-hmm. You know, after seeing that abject performance, so yeah. just going three up and then coming back and you're thinking, you're leaving the ground thinking, well, where are we going here? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think I, it's it's massive for next season as well. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree yeah, on yeah. that. And that's what I mean about, like, time might change our opinion on this. Because ultimately, 
it gets us three points the same way the Carvalho's does, it, but it's toward the end of the season and Liverpool trying to turn the fortunes around. Yeah, exactly. If, if, if Richarlison costs us two points at Anfield, then I just can't, I, I don't see how you pick yourself back up. Yeah. How, how, how does it get better after that? If we win the Europa League next season because we finish above Tottenham by two points, like Alisson's head, that'll take context and we might be yeah. because of what happened. we went on to qualify the European stuff. Yeah. That it could, it could age even better. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think it probably go. it's quite high, you know. It's, it might be two. I think it's it definitely th it's definitely three. Yeah, it's I'd say three. I think it's three. Space, I'd, say it's, I'd say it's three. And if Liverpool have the, the end of the season that we're hoping, it might age more. Yeah. It might. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might go up. Uh, look, if we finish in the Conference League, um, everyone will be cursing that he's got <laughs> <laughs> that goal. We're playing off two o'clock on a Friday. Like, <laughs> the yeah. Couldn't that have felt a Darwin? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, okay. I, I mean, look. I'm, if I'm, someone wants to make a, a strong case for it to be higher than that, I'm no, because I know it's coming. It. So. Okay. So, two more, two more big ones left. The first, I'm toying with what order to release these in. I'm going to go with Divock Origi, ninety six minutes. Just put them all versus down. Everton, one nil, twenty eighteen. Jordan Pickford. Jürgen Klopp hugs Alison Becker on the halfway line of the pitch. <laughs> um, Everton fans are just throwing a flare on the pitch to celebrate a 0 0. The yeah. most Everton moment in a football match <laughs> of all time. I, I think it Discuss. might It might be forgotten at the moment, but like, I forgot he played for us until he brought him on. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen him for ages. He turned up and he had like dreadlocks. Like, well, when he come on and he, and he fluffs a chance a couple of minutes earlier in a very sort, yeah. of, sort, sort of similar position, and you go, well, that's just Divock, isn't it? You know what I mean? That's what happens when you bring in Divock Origi into games. Little did we know that we were watching the genesis of Divock Origi, uh, cult hero for all time. Um, it's, because it's, a, I, it's a magic moment. I think when we brought him on, I think we we just brought Sturridge on as well, and we were like, bloody hell, we need to buy a striker. Because <laughs> why are we bringing these two on in the derby? And then obviously uh, he gets the... And then he goes on, actually, he he stays in the team, or he's there or thereabouts right till the end of the season, context-wise Sturridge well. plays a lot of the... Sturridge plays like Paris Saint-Germain yeah. in the Champions League, as an example, when Firmino's injured. Sturridge is the neck... He's the fourth of the forwards, and this is the game where Origi is a bit fit and available, isn't he, and starts scoring important goals for us. It's, I think it, it, it's probably better than the, the Goodison one, I think. It's one of my favourites ever goal. Yeah, me too. It's just one of the favourites <laughs> ever moments. And context to that, as well as the Camelades, uh, lads and lasses got on strike and he come to Anfield that day collecting. And Ross Quinn, who's the uh, United uh, Trade Union rep, you know, the officer, he's a huge blue nose. So he was in that end. Uh, we were in, obviously... It goes off, and we'd already said we were going to Boston night with the Camelades, right. collecting and to highlight the stake. So at the end of it, obviously we win. We go back to Taggy, and Ross is just like ashen face, and I said, <laughs> "You've got to come to the Boston nights now." <laughs> he comes to Boston nights. We get him on stage, and you can imagine. What <laughs> <he's been there. laughs> and he had fair play to the lad, you know. He sucked it up, and he went on, and he spoke about obviously the stake and the big collection. But it was just the most. Perfect night. It was just <laughs> everything about it, and they say it was just like just the most Everton game ever, wasn't it? Oh, it really it was. It was just it. one of my favourite ever games. When you speak about hilarity, if that <laughs> is, you know, part of the criteria here, I don't think I've laughed so much at a goal in my life. Like it was, it was cheering, but it was tears streaming down your face, <laughs> laughing at the same time. I was thinking. <laughs> Why was that a goal? Like, surely he's even offside, or it's gone oh. out. Or I was amazed that they just didn't find something wrong with it because I've never seen anything. You'll never see the ball bounce off the crossbar. It's going twice. out, no. <laughs> and he pushes it back into play yeah. because he's, because Pickford's an idiot. But it's the drama of the Van Dyke shock. Grown. It's just yeah. terrible, and you're thinking, oh no. What? <laughs> it's like you, unbelievable. Liverpool do that video, don't they? Where they do the, the, the goal from every angle, have you seen it? And every single one, it's the cross. It's Alison passes the trend cross, comes in, it comes to Virgil, and you're there. Oh. <laughs> and then you're there, dink, dink. Ah! <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so good. It's like... Everyone was fuming at Van Dyke. Even Van Dyke's fuming, he turns away. Yeah. Fuming at himself. Yeah. And the, like, the songs has got legs as well. Like we're still singing the song at him now, Pickford, yeah. aren't we? So, yeah. oh little arms, yeah, probably. yeah. Like obviously came from there as well. Yeah. I think it's going to go in the one. Isn't it? There's nothing that sums up two football clubs more. Yeah, yeah. is there and, and a rivalry that's been completely and utterly dominated by the superior sides than that goal? Divock Origi. Don't like underestimate, mate. Don't, don't underestimate the blue filler. How much that adds to that game. 
Do you set a flare off at 0-0? Yeah, yeah. 0-0? Yeah. We set a flare on the pitch. And then they get attacked. Wait, 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 was it blue? Yeah. Was I getting confused? Was it blue? Purple, purple, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It wasn't the bluest flare I've ever seen. It was, there was a, Yeah, there was the infamous purple flare <laughs> from, from back in the day when Lost was in a tight uh, people <laughs> yeah. smoke was a big thing. Like, um, We've got one more. Is it big enough to top Divock Origi in the Merseyside derby? It is Alison Becker. Oh. The only goalkeeper in Premier League history to score a winning goal yeah. in a football match. Two one mm-hmm. West Brom, twenty twenty one. The only man who's ever made me take my top off on the internet. Um, <laughs> That's a lot. He, he was on his knees, swinging his t-shirt around <laughs> on the floor on a live stream. Was this during COVID as yeah. well? Yeah. So COVID. I think there was during the COVID watch songs. There was about twenty five thousand people watching us. Just on the floor with this crazy look in his eye. It was brilliant. Something else. I always. It's I'm one sure. of my favourite memories. Full stop. It's brilliant. I'm always so happy that Nat Phillips didn't get it. I reckon he was about to put it 20 rows up into, the, into that empty stand behind the goal. Matt Phillips has said that. Yeah. Matt Phillips has said I was missing that by a mile. <laughs> the fact that it was Allardyce as well in the, in the other dugout makes, mm. makes it a little bit funny. You, you, know why you, can, you know why you can't go top? Because, I mean, it breaks me heart that because there's no fans. Yeah. yeah. And they were all watching it, weren't they? But you can imagine what it would have been like to be in there, to be exactly. in there if it had been. So I think it's got a category of its own for uniqueness. But just not having the fans there, I just, I just think that's the outbreaker for them. It's such a good header. <laughs> that like, was a great header. Yeah. Like, <laughs> perfect header. Bullet header. Yeah. Oh. Can I, I just make a, a Divock Origi, Newcastle away? You know, the week before Barcelona, we were there. And that was one of the best let offs ever because we were right in the midst of the race, weren't we, with City? And, yeah. you know, he does it again, doesn't he? With I an header. It was a great that, game now. I can't, might not have been injury time. It wasn't that just like. It was late, but it, yeah. yeah. And also, I think it makes me really sad thinking about that because we were, that was like, yeah. Because I can't, I can't think about that without thinking about freaking Vincent Company yeah. battering one in against yeah, Leicester. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, there might have been a last minute. wise it was right to the end? But it, yeah, I was thinking yeah. Collymore four three might have made you the, <sighs> the top ten. Yeah, that, that game is like one of the best games. Where's Alison? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hijacking your second. I <laughs> kind of agree with Ian. I, I would never have thought of it like that, but the no fans thing mean no one got to celebrate it like we would have. And, Where is that? It was great seeing you with your top off, don't get me wrong, but like, <laughs> I'm sure I saw about 50 lads with the tops off for the Everton one, so if we're counting how many shirts got taken off, and, and you know, also ended up about five rows, you know, yeah. away from where you were supposed to be, yeah. the Everton one tops it by a mile. It's hard to really take anything that happened in that Coburn se- season, like, serious. Careful. In fact, yeah. we're careful, Steve. We won, the, we won the league then. <laughs> no, yeah, not that no, no. No, no. This is, yeah. yeah, that was season before, that, that was sorted. It, it's... I, I'll never remember anything from that. The only thing I'll ever remember from that season is that header. We lost six games back to back. I mean, it was yeah. all, all I remember is being stuck in that room through there with Chris. Just <laughs> miserable, miserable. Yeah. Every week, twice a week, turn it up to sit in a little room and, and watch Liverpool lose games on the telly. <laughs> like a training ground. Yeah, 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 it was awful. And I remember, like, Fucking song two by Blair playing every time he <laughs> scored a goal. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's weird because like you watch these, like again, you watch compilation videos or stuff, it's like Liverpool have played Real Madrid five times. Have we? And it's like two of them being them stupid COVID season. You, they just don't register in your head. Other yeah. than, oh, not other than Alison's head. You could tell me anyone I've scored in that season. I would, I would probably have believe you. And including against us. Because everyone seemed to beat us in, the, in, in that little run as well. Um, I think we've done well there. The comments, just before we wrap up. Um, actually, one from Thor here saying... Uh, context Ali still grieving if she's, his dad had just died mm. in the build up to that oh, as yeah. well and, and Allardyce's bitter post-match interview um, was a big part of that as well and then a mention there for uh, from Brendan uh, it's got to be number one just for the fact that we saw Paul's moves um, which is great thank you so much for that um, <laughs> and also you mentioned it before Paul goalkeepers don't score winners because if you draw him you don't send your goalkeeper up exactly. so there yeah. was just something else there yeah. too it wasn't yeah. there yeah. and that's the one we talked about Liverpool being in a sort of comparative situation right now of needing to win a, all the games in the run-in but that was it you know that was the slimmest of slim chances oh, of getting top four yeah. I know they've still got to go on and win games after it but there's no you never feel like it's possible until, until that moment that happens um, and so then we, if we'd we won the European Cup would we have said would I that mean, have made a difference well we go on and effectively do is it the quite is it that's last season isn't it the season that follows so yeah you know we we nearly Win the quadruple off the back of we get to the Champions League final. I think you're right. I think if we if we if we win against Real in Paris, that goal is the thing that yeah. propels it's the us Napoli on our way. save. Yeah, uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, it's got that kind of significance. 
Interesting. Okay, go on then, Steve. Do you want to just run us through what we've what we've settled upon then? In terms of yeah, so we had uh, Carvalho in the five, Katavi Milmers in the four, Lalana, Clavan, and Jota in three. Mela, Mane, Mane against Everton, and then sorry, Mane against Villa, Mane against Everton, and then Alisson at two, and then we had him. Divock was always the, the odds on favour, I think, wasn't he? It, we're going to have to do something special to beat that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I can't wait till the next time he scored an injury time winner against Everton. Well, and I'll I'm... be waiting a long time, Steve. AFC Everton in like 20 years' time when they've they re emerged. Yeah, the yeah, Phoenix but... Everton Phoenix, Phoenix Club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good point. That might, yeah, there might, there might never be a derby moment. As, as there will be. That. Maybe we'll draw them in the cup. The fates need it to happen. It's like everything conspires for us to have a laugh at Everton at every opportunity we can. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be sort of mad to make a funnier goal than that. Yeah. When you added the context, are we Real Madrid's Everton? Yes. Damn it. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, there you go. Why do you have to down us like that? What's the head of the eye? <laughs> <laughs> Damn me. Um, cool. If you agree or disagree with any of the um, answers there, do let us know in the comments. What would your top five be as well? Leave them one to five underneath. That would be absolutely splendid. Uh, well done, Steve. You can give your arm a rest now, mate. Congratulations. Um, cool. One more break from us, and when we return, we're going to be previewing Liverpool versus Brentford. Hey everyone, what's happening? We've got an incredible prize to give away this month. It is a signed picture and frame of Liverpool's three-time European Cup winning former captain, the man, the legend, Phil Thompson. Yes, if you join up as a club legend subscriber on redmenplus.com or if you're an existing club captain subscriber and wish to upgrade, your name will go in the hat at the end of the month to win that incredible sign prize. Bang it on your mantelpiece, stick it on the wall of your man cave or woman cave uh, and add to your incredible Liverpool collection with this wonderful piece of LFC memorabilia. I was quite enjoying our pre-filming chat mm. around various messes that we've been in over the years. <laughs> and I got I got me thinking, like, what is the most you've ever woken up in the morning and gone, oh, shit. I don't believe I've shared this one on camera. And if I have, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> We are ever. Hey, yes, welcome back. Um, I'm going to fill for a moment or two as one of our guests uh, <laughs> returns to the sofa any second now. Um, welcome if you're just joining us. It is Thursday Night Pint, uh, it is the match preview. I am joined. Um, not just by myself, uh, but on couch number one by Steve Hall and by Chris Pajak, who were both looking toilet, absolutely yeah. resplendent. Everyone resplendent. thought I was in the toilet. Yeah. It's the week, week. We probably should have told the guest there was two toilets in the building because I think he was waiting for me to come back. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you guys are obviously ready, willing and able to preview Liverpool versus Brentford, of course, aren't you, gents? Oh, I can't yeah, wait. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's what, it's can't what, wait. It's what I made for me. Yeah. Brilliant. And then on couch number two... Um, we... <laughs> Who are also uh, ready, willing, and able to preview uh, Liverpool versus Brentford? Um, Nick, as the morning who's most refreshed amongst us. Um, (laughs) Look, it's just one of those games, isn't it? I mean, there's not there's not tons to say about it beyond. Just got to keep the run going. That's we're, we're playing for vibes at the bare minimum. You know, probably Europa League, maybe Champions League, but in reality. It's about playing for people feeling in a boss mood when the end of the season. Brentford, a little bit there. You know, we've had a couple of bad results against them away from home. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to put a, that right will definitely aid the cause. Yeah, coming away from the game uh, last night, you know, those, even though the game itself was a bit of a hard watch, like the lads walking back to the car, we were kind of like, yeah, our five kickoffs, Saturday, fancy that. We'll go have a few beers afterwards. Like, 
the the atmosphere was a little bit lifted and I just feel like that clean sheet as well just gives us something to build on a little bit and I want to see Trent play in this position more I want to see what he can do the more he's in there so I'm actually looking forward to the game and uh, listen I, I'm resigned myself to Europa League football next season as Ian said earlier get me to Dublin I'm all <laughs> over that I feel like booking an easy jet as soon as they come on sale so yeah. Yeah, I think I think optimism's picked up a little bit. I think now it's just a case of let's just keep this win and run going, win every game to the end of the season, and then what happens? What happens? You know. Yeah, yeah I think that's exactly that's exactly right, isn't it? Ian? Is that if you do that and you do get Europa League, there will be a sense of disappointment, absolutely, mm. but at least you get to go. Okay, well, look, a problem was identified. They found a the cut-off point, and you're starting to look at next season's Liverpool, and you can imagine what they're going to look like. Whereas, I mean, we've been saying for a few weeks, if you continued that up and down form, the net result might be the same. You might have still ended up in the in the Europa League. You know, who knows? But you'd be thinking, oh God, <coughs> what team is going to come back in the in the new season? Yeah, you can see progression, can't you? I mean, it's sense experiments fascinating. I'm sure you just spoke about it. I mean, on uh, yesterday, he's just like gliding across the pitch and I just thought he just looked ultra class he's a great player uh, but I just think that position's so interesting because it's 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 interesting it's something we haven't seen before and it could be a catalyst for next season it could be tremendous you know a couple of other players alongside him that's no disrespect to Endo Fabinho uh, but you've got players there potential ones that are getting spoken about and I think you're looking at it and thinking, wow, what could that look like? Obviously, we spoke about Nunes. You're seeing the emergence of gap call becoming fundamentally important to the and really, really good player. So for me, it's not like fizzling out the season. You're looking at potential. It felt could like this it was be fizzling next, out a few weeks this, ago. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Could Last this be the next? So you're looking forward to the end of the season. Could this be like, like you know, when we used to see Ferguson, you know, you suddenly see a new team starting to be developed. You go, one oh, gone. These have got another team on the horizon yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Have we, you know, we going into that sort of stage now where we're looking at next season, looking at this formation? You know, we haven't talked about Kanate. I think he's been outstanding. Yeah. Yeah, the way he's on the front foot, he's attacking. He's, you know, he's, he's really, really relishing that role. So for me, potential re emergence of Liverpool uh, in, a, in a different form in a different system with different players, but potentially could be as effective as what we've seen previous. It's fascinating. I also think the, the, the Brentford game away was where a lot of our problems first like were really identified. Yeah, they yeah. they had they, they bullied us a little bit. They had that time when they got yeah. two this large goals from set piece and then scored off the next one. Just like stupid things like that where Liverpool looked a little bit frazzled and a bit all over the place. It'd be interesting to see now we've done this change with obviously Alexander Arnold playing this this new role that he's in and Liverpool the whole setup changed and a few new players in a few like Oxley Chamberlain scores in that game for example he's been he's nowhere near it now it'll be interesting like, as a measuring stick because that was what we was and then we've we've made this change that you've said and now here's, here's the new net result of it because again Brentford I thought uh, two away games we've been to their place in the last two seasons and we've really struggled we, we beat them relatively comfortably at home last season but I think it is it's like a good measuring stick to see where we're at because yeah. they did they 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 you know, we had we had a few losses this season where it's been pretty comprehensive, and I know Liverpool got a goal in that game, but it, it still felt like it was a pretty, a pretty handy beat. And so it'd be nice to see, right? Here's Trent, here's the new, here's all the new lads, here's, here's Diaz is back, here's Jota, here's Jota back. We've got it all going again. If we can, if we can wipe the flow with them, it's a, it's like a, a big mark of progression yeah. from A to B. Well, it's a good challenge in that regard, isn't it? Because because Thomas Frank's a good manager. Yeah, and he so is, back yeah. going back to the away yeah. game last season where they really identified they were like putting the three men on the back post to upset Trent Alexander-Arnold and he will be sat this week where, looking at what we're doing and trying to find small little ways like myopically focusing on two or three little ideas to upset Liverpool and that's what, again, that's what I mean it's a different kind of challenge and to the point I think there's I think we've got them probably a couple of weeks too soon for them to be on the beach yet. They're in ninth, but you know, if we're talking about being able to get into maybe outside chance of Champions League or whatever, they'll be saying the same thing about Conference League and maybe even fringes of Europa. Yeah. A couple of wins for them. One win here might might put them on the beach, but they're not there yet. Yeah, they're not. I think the interesting thing with them and, and specifically what Liverpool have been playing like the last few weeks is we've been dead open. You know about that Nottingham Forest game where we can see from two throw-ins, well, Brentford will take advantage of throw-ins. Yeah, yeah. And we've conceded a lot of free kicks recently in the yeah. last sort of, even in this spell. So although we have been much better on the ball, we, we, we have actually conceded a lot of chances during these games. Obviously, it's a mad 4-3 game. There's a 3-2 game in there. We probably don't really deserve a clean sheet last yeah. night, but for unbelievable goalkeeping and unbelievable 
defending from the likes of Virgil van Dijk and stuff. So that for me is where he'll be looking to focus on. Can he get them in from dead, you know, from set pieces and all that type of stuff? Focus on those types of things. Also, they don't get beat often. You got the league table in front of you there. I think they've only been beat about eight times. Yeah. You draw a lot of games, but they're very hard to beat at the they've same time. Drawn fourteen games, which is more than anyone else in the entire league. Yeah, no one else has drawn more games this season than Brentford. Newcastle have drawn eleven. Um, Crystal That's Palace. How many have they lost? And you're right, they've only lost eight, eight. And how many have we lost? We have lost nine. I mean, like that, that's good, you know. They're, and you're they're the as well. The third top scorer in the league plays for them. I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's Harland, Kane, Ivan Tony, so 20, or 20 goals. And it, so, if, if you've got, you know, if you mentioned before, like, the, the, I think one of the reasons we got away with it a little bit against Forest was because they finished him poor. I actually think the same against Tottenham. I think they could have scored, you know, they scored three, they could have scored five. Yeah, like, it, I think you'd back Ivan Tony to score some of those. You know, Harry Kane in that game got one chance, scored it. And, and even Tony's a little bit, I know he's some of them are penalties because he's he's a world he pen taker, obviously. Bad one he missed recently against Newcastle. But they've got someone, he'll be there now, I think, Thomas Frank, like you say. There'll be a, a specific game plan that gets Ivan Tony in these positions. And I'll be honest, the pool, the back door hasn't been closed. Has it? I know we did keep the clean sheets against Fulham, but it was... You know, it was it was squeaky. You know what I mean? It was it was Allison pulling off a couple of worldies, and mm-hmm. you know Van Dyke off the line a little bit. It wasn't like Liverpool was were completely solid. Mm-hmm. So I think they've got to be on the game against Brentford. I think, but I think it's a really tough challenge if you look at the the games we've got left. The two home games, it's it's um, it's Villa and Brentford. They're both tough games, yeah. like against de- relatively decent sides. And then the away games are two teams fighting for their lives. Well, they've got measuring sticks, like you said. Yeah, yeah. You know, shows, that's yeah. a tremendous record they've got there, isn't it? Credit to the manager and how the players are implementing it. Yeah. But they're not parked the bus. No. They're a good team, aren't yeah. they? They're a but good they're very, team. they're very... Um, they attack your weakness, they identify a weakness yeah, and they smell know, blood. Yeah. That game against us with them three kicks, they had it planned, you could yeah. tell. They had it all worked out. Yeah. They were flooding the back post and then had someone at the front and they hit it to him. And they, they, yeah. They're really smart, they're a really clever team. Yeah. They're like... Um, I don't know, they... they, they you know, the one percent the, the marginal gains they're all over that kind of stuff they're really you know they're that type of club they binned off the youth team because they went down the analytics route they're really like a, they're, they're a different proposition and it's gonna be, I think it'll be a tough game Thomas Frank knows a lot about football probably not as much not as, as Sam Allardyce no, no, as as <laughs> <much> as <laughs> no, no, no one does be careful no one does been, Sam Allardyce drinking the Stephen Ireland Kool-Aid yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. what's he been on about <laughs> this week amazing. absolutely amazing I think I think the, I think the yardstick thing's interesting because you mentioned that Brentford and Villa there's two teams whose ambition now is can we get into Europa League that would be the pinnacle of there. we can get into Europa League then that is an exceptional season Absolutely. for us mm-hmm. and it's a disappointment for us and we need and these are the teams we need to put in our rear view mirror if we want to just that's a mentality them. thing there as well isn't there yeah. you know that Liverpool have to get over because yeah, you've yeah. got two sides Aston Villa especially from where they were early this season yeah, he's, with doing job, he? he's yeah. done an incredible job yeah. that's right and you know, they're going for something that they probably didn't think was possible. Yeah, and we're going for something. We're still a little bit disappointed that we're not maybe getting Ruby Champions Price. League. Yeah. True. Uh, just in terms of Liverpool then. Um, Luis Diaz, they start again? He can go, yeah. He, he looked, again, he looked he jaded and he tired the other night. And obviously, if you ask him to go Wednesday night, Saturday night, it might be a bit too much for him. Um, but if he's fit, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's got like... I don't know. He's got the skills, right? He's got all that, but he's it's, it's tenacity. It's just unbelievable. It's like that. You know, it's just like never give up. There was a couple of times where he looked like he'd lost, it and he just yeah. runs away from it. Yeah. He's happy to boot you if he needs to boot you. You know, he, he's gnarly about it. Um, every we've seen him a few times now off the bench. Obviously, he gets a couple at the start there as well. Um, he looks like he's. It's a shame that the season's about to end because it looks like he's just about to get back into it, and then we're going to cut him off. So I think yeah, and also like I say, um. If he can go, then I would start him. But I wouldn't be shocked if he, if Jürgen's going to try and look after him a little bit. He's I, had a long, it was a long time out that he had. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind, Chris. I don't know about you. He's in our best. If we're playing for yeah. from three, oh, yeah. he's, in, he's in the best one. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He needs to have more goals for his game. Mm-hmm. I think that like you could probably, if you were being pessimistic last night, I'd have, I'd have actually liked him to shoot a little bit more. He was trying to bring players in, which normally you applaud. But like he was in a really good position to shoot himself a couple of times when he, he looked got a into bit the too penalty. keen yeah. to get Darwin a goal. I yeah, think. maybe which is no maybe bad thing. But... It. And you know, maybe he's been helping him with the language and all that type of stuff. So he's been kind of buddied up and all that stuff. Maybe that's something there. Maybe he knows a little bit more than the rest of the squad about how how difficult maybe he's found. It he knows how to say stuff. run there, lad. Yeah, well, in maybe his natural language. As well, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> so yeah, look, he's an outstanding footballer. I think everybody knows that. But he's a he's a tempo setter at the same time for yeah. me. 
And I think you need them, don't you? And yeah. I think, you know, I don't think we've got one in the middle of the park anymore. Yeah. I think tends to lead in a different way when he's got mm-hmm. the ball. But like someone who's going to go out there and ju- he's just a dog. Like, you know what I mean? You need people with just fighting them, don't yeah. you? To set that like tempo. Like Suarez, hasn't yeah. he? He's yeah. got exactly. that, yeah. that spirit. I just, think, I just think watching him last couple of games, you realise what we've missed because he's just absolutely tremendous and yet he's absolutely one of the first names on the sheet when he's uh, when he's fit and he is next season he's going to be absolutely pivotal pivotal football for us next year dependent I mean Klopp talked about it saying it's not really a problem as such when you've got lots of really good players all fit and available I mean it's the opposite to the problem that he's had all season so yeah. I reckon he probably sees it as quite a welcome return um, but it Gapo, Jota, Diaz, actually all in really good form, and Salah's Salah. Mm-hmm. That's the that's going to be the interesting question. And this, I, I, we had a big chat about Darwin earlier. We may as well bring it in as well. I don't feel like there was enough from him in midweek to go. You mentioned Gapo again, yeah, of course. But there will be an interesting conversation around Jota and Diaz because to Chris's point, Jota scores the goals. Yeah. Diaz seems to fit the whole thing perfectly. But Klopp's clearly favoured Jota in the last in the last few weeks. Yeah, and I think he will continue to as well. Um, obviously, Mo's going to start, but even even last night, team, you see him Mo come off the bench, come off mm. the pitch. I, he, he wasn't playing well, you know. He, he wasn't having his best game, far from it. So, you want that competition up there. You want that competition up top. And I think also, like Sir Curtis Jones, I, I'll be honest, yeah. I'm not a big Curtis Jones fan. <clears throat> and you know, for me, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel when he's starting to play games, but. Last few games, I've had to go, listen, kid's playing great. Yeah. He's playing really well. He's enjoying his football. He's involved all the time. He's making things happen. And what we've started doing again is turning and running at defences, you know, and that's something, obviously, Diaz brings to us out on the wing. But uh, I think getting Curtis on the ball and just letting him, allowing him to do that, I think, I don't know whether that's because Trent's coming inside, so it's freeing them up to be a little bit more adventurous in the field. But, yeah, it's... Uh, Good stuff. What are we doing then, Steve? Lineups. I, th- I think the interesting one, mate, is I think Robertson comes back in for Costa. I think that's a given. Um, it's whether he thinks George. Can I just ask actually on that the same question? Getting taken off, I thought, because you know, yeah. I didn't did think he did anything wrong necessarily. But then Robbo come on and put in a world he crossed the first <laughs> touch he had, and you go, oh, okay, fair enough. I think it's his level. I think it was. I think it was. I, th- I think it was more that he was just resting Robertson. Yeah. Um. So I think he plays. It's whether he, it's the Henderson one for me. It's, it, does he think Jordan Henderson can, can go again? He obviously, um, he left him out. Uh, he's, he's played Harvey Elliott in there, hasn't he? When, when Henderson wasn't fit, um, it's the physicality against Brentford. Yeah, that, that, that's, 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 the, that's, that's the worry. I would like it. I think I, it should be it should be Henderson. It's gotta be. But he, again, he played ninety yesterday, and he, he looked knackered. You know, I think he had a shot for like twenty odd yards because he just couldn't be arsed running anymore. He just well, he went down, didn't he? I was like, oh god, I hope he's not injured. And then the ball dropped too, and he just yeah, he just decided the to lob the goalie for yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just not 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 quite as successfully. So it depends how he is, but. Yeah, I, I think I think it's the I think Robertson comes in. I think it's the same midfield, and I think Gakpo starts ahead of Darwin. I think he will go with Diaz if he can, um, with Salary on the other side. I, I think that's what he'd like to do. But again, I I I I'd hear him to be cautious with Diaz. If there's any worry about him, then listen. Ultimately, next season is more important than the end of this one. So you you would wrap in Cotton Wool a bit. But again, going back to the Brentford thing and the thing you just said about Diaz having this dog in him, I think that could be important against these. I think it could be that yeah. kind of game where you need where you need a little bit of that. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'd do. I don't think there's any problem. Again, if you bring in Diaz and Nunes into the game at the moment, I still think Nunes probably suits when games are getting a bit ragged toward the end. You know, maybe things open up a little bit more. That's how we were using him at the start of the season. He's never really truly developed beyond that. And you're right on the Diaz stuff. I want him to play every game between now and the end of the season, so that makes kind of sense. Jot has been playing well from the start. He's been scoring important goals for us, and gapo has been absolutely class hasn't he so I don't mind that the Henderson stuff the Elliot stuff's only I think if you need someone you want that physicality for later in the game because if Hendo's knackered which which period of the game is he most useful to you because you bring a Milner in to shut the game down and is Milner enough mm. to shut the game down do you maybe go with Elliot and go right let's just go and try and get this game won in 45 and then shut it down mm. that's the it's only tough. consideration but, but I think Henderson will get the will get the nod Um Let's have some score predictions then. Nick, what do you think? Uh, I'm feeling quite confident, actually. I'm, unfortunately, judging by the defending the other night, I think they will score. Yeah. I think we'll, I think we will concede again. But I'm confident we'll uh, put a couple in the other end. So I'm going to go with 2-1. 3-1. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great, Chris. 3-2 to us. I think it's going to be a while. Last minute, we shared a mind. Injury, in the last few time weeks. winner. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that, definitely. 
I just want us to score the last goal. I don't care what. As long as the winning and the last goal. Yeah, go on, Steve. Yeah, I go two one as well. I think it'll be tight. I think they're a good team. Yeah. I've, I, I feel I feel a three two on this one. Maybe not quite in the same Forest vein, but it'd be an interesting test for because you're right. They're going to exploit set pieces and all, all, all those kind of situations. It's got the hallmarks of uh, we score three, they score two, and you walk out going, "Oh fucking hell, that was close." Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll look. I'll take it. I'll take a clutch. You miss a chance in the last few minutes that yeah. he really could have scored. Allison's world. Needs to pull a save out. Just win the game, Liverpool, whatever it takes. <laughs> um, right, cool. That is the preview. Thank you so much for joining us on Thursday Night Pint. Big love to our guests. Absolutely fantastic this week. Um, and yeah, we are going to have another Thursday Night Pint at 7 pm next week. We're also going to be doing Redmen Uncensored after this as well. So if you want a more relaxed, non football chat about life, the universe, and everything, come and join us over on Plus. And one last shout come and join us on Friday live at Hotel Anfield in the flesh. Party, music, quiz. Dizzy, you could maybe take a dizzy pen against Chris Pajak. Wait, what? <laughs> it's news to Chris. Um, you won't remember it anyway, it's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, come and join us. The tickets are still available, ticket quarter. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you there. Other than that, thank you so much. That was Thursday Night Pints. Up the next. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the show. Did you know that if you become a Club Legend subscriber, that's a yearly Club Legend on redmenplus.com, we will send you two instant free merch codes to get yourself some decent clobber from Redmen merch. So it's a no-brainer. Go and do it.